first dinner in the oven and in the oven not in the oven. <laughs> we have our first sitter in the crock pot. This is an outstanding dish. Yeah, it's falling off the bone. Absolutely perfection. This is a five star soup recipe. Cause baby in your absence life is boring. So I'll never leave. It's Monday, I'm so excited. These recipes are so flavorful. I love them and you are going to love them too. I'm so excited for you to make them. I'm going to start out with this first recipe, which is our rosemary apple chicken. It is absolutely delicious. We're going to make that first and it's going to be so good. So let's get cooking. I am not even kidding you when I say that this week of food was so beyond delicious. Like it was a next level of flavor. You will love these meals. And this particular meal I've made a million times before, but in the oven. And so making it in the crock pot just made everything so much more flavorful because obviously it's a slow cooker meal, but you literally just chop up your apples and your onion, a little bit of rosemary, and you put your chicken in there with a little bit of oil, a little bit of honey, and yeah, salt and pepper, and then your balsamic vinegar and put it in the crock pot and you are done. All right, we have our first dinner in the oven and in the oven, not in the oven. We have our first dinner in the crock pot. There we go, in the slow cooker. And this is one of my favorite recipes of all time. This is a tried and true, it is so delicious. And I just wanna say, I did a fall meal prep video if you haven't seen that already, but I already meal prepped my butternut squash. So if you want, you can add in butternut squash right now and that'll be really great because then you'll have a nice full complete meal. You have your protein and your carbohydrate. But since I already have my butternut squash cooked and I actually even have sweet potato cooked, I'm just going to pick one of them, probably the butternut squash and eat that alongside of the dinner. So anyway, just a little tip. Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to smell amazing in here with the rosemary. I cannot wait. She's so this is the point where I am going to add my butternut squash. So obviously, as I said, I did meal prep it, but if you didn't meal prep it, you would obviously want to add that in at the very beginning. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the chicken and all of our veggies and everything like that. I'm going to take everything out of the crock pot except for the sauce. And what you want to do is you want to boil that sauce down. You want to reduce it down. And this is the star of the show. It is so delicious. It's so worth it to take. I think it took me about 15 minutes to reduce it down, but wow, you do not want to skip that. It is what makes the meal. It is the highlight of the meal. So go ahead and serve it up. And then you want to just pour your reduction over the top and your taste buds are going to literally do a dance because it is so delicious. Thank you. This looks good. You're welcome. I'm excited to try. Remember, I used to make this all the time. It just smells it's so really good. Good. good job, baby. Mm, stop. It's so good. It's so good. I forgot how much I love this. This is an outstanding dish. Yeah, it's falling off the bone. Absolutely perfection. Perfect fall recipe. We go apple picking. Mmm. Let's go apple picking this weekend. Let's do it, and then have a bonfire on the beach. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds fun, huh? Yeah. This sweet corn and sweet potato chili is beyond amazing. So I actually, again, I pre-cooked my sweet potatoes because I did meal prep, but you would want to add your sweet potatoes in at the very beginning of this as well. So just a little note to make, but I'm going to use my chopper and I'm going to chop up all of my ingredients and just basically add that into my crock pot. This is so simple. I love the sweet corn that I got from the local farmer's market. I'm not a huge corn person, but, and by the way, I'm like so weird with the jalapeno. I 
am scared to cut jalapeno. I don't know any other way to say that. It sounds really dramatic, but every time I cut jalapeno, it gets underneath my nails and it burns my nails. Like, I don't know. Anyway, I, I don't know if that happens to anybody else, but I like I genuinely don't like cutting jalapeno. <laughs> so I'm just going to add my chili in there and then a little bit of cumin and garlic and then stir it up and then you are good to go. You're just gonna add in your chicken over the top and then you wanna pour in your bone broth. Now again, I did prep and make my own bone broth, but of course you can use bone broth that is pre-made. So once you've shredded the chicken that's now cooked, so we're pretty much at the tail end of this recipe here. So you're gonna just shred the chicken, add in your coconut milk, and then you're gonna squeeze in your fresh lime. And this is really what brings that flavor to life. And the citrus just complements everything so well with some fresh cilantro. And when I say some, I mean like a ton of fresh cilantro. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Mmm. So good. Good job. So good with the avocado and sweet potato. Wow. Mm. So much in one bite. That is so good. It'd be really bomb with some chips in there too. Mm. You should mm. do like videos, like all these like scramble ideas. You can literally dump some of this in your pan, fry it up and put some eggs on. <laughs> And that's why I make the recipe. I I would not. You would cook I would not bone. pour this. And You'd then... pour it in some in a pan. No. It's very, it's not that soupy. You just you boil it Baby, down. It's and soup. It's like, like kind of gets thick. You would boil the soup down. Crack that egg right on top. <laughs> okay, that's why I cook. <laughs> Guar guaranteed, it's gonna taste good. Okay, save Everything a little bit, good. and then do it. That's really bomb. You have peppers, I mean, all that good stuff. Thanks, baby. It's bomb. All right, so it is Wednesday and today's crock pot meal is actually from my book, Growing Strong, which is so funny. I feel like I've never made a recipe <laughs> out of my book before, but this soup is absolutely amazing. One of you just tagged me recently on Instagram saying how good this soup was, and it reminded me just how delicious it is. So we are gonna make this soup tonight. Okay, I did just wanna let you know, I'm. by the way, I'm kind of swollen, and you can hear it a little bit in my voice. It is so windy outside, and I am just having allergies, so. Please excuse that, but anyway, so for tonight's dinner, you do not have to do it the way that I'm doing. If you want to, you can just chuck everything in the crock pot and turn it on and you will be good to go. But I am actually, I want more flavor and here's how to get more flavor in your crock pot soups. Even, even though it does require an extra step, but I'm telling you it is worth it. Again, totally optional, you don't have to do it. I'm gonna do it because I want that really good flavor. And it is actually later in the day. So we're gonna get this done. I am going to cook the veggies over the stove in a pot. So we're gonna do that. And that is going to bring out so much more flavor. We're just gonna caramelize those onions a little bit and we're just, just sauteing is gonna bring it to life and really bring out the flavor. If you want a little extra flavor, that's what we're gonna do. So again, if you really wanna take this soup to the next level, I really cannot recommend enough that you just take a couple minutes and just whip this up over the stove. So, and by the way, I was actually watching this back and I just thought about how when I was in fourth grade, I would come home from school and I would always watch Giada and Bobby Flay and Rachel Ray. And I loved watching the cook or the Food Network, well, I loved watching cooking, but I loved watching the Food Network and I loved watching, you know, baking championships. And it's so funny, I just had this moment where I was like, I'm kind of doing that now. Like I'm not on the Food Network, but it's just so fun to share these meals with you and cook and cooking just brings me so much joy. And I just hope that you love these recipes. This is an outstanding recipe. I mean, I just can't even say that enough. This chicken noodle soup is, it is a next level of flavor. And I'm like, I cannot even contain, like I'm watching this and I'm just like, 
reminiscing at how good it was and it just makes me want to make it again. Okay, I just had a taste test of our crock pot chicken noodle and I can't even believe how delicious this is. This is a five star soup recipe. I mean, if you are going to make anything from this video, all of the recipes have been amazing, but this chicken noodle soup is so easy. I will say it's definitely worth the extra maybe 10, not even 15 minutes of cooking it up on the stove, it's really gonna bring out that flavor. You know, it's so balanced. You have the brown rice in there from the brown rice noodles, and those are the best noodles. I will leave a link to them in the description box, exactly to those noodles. And then the chicken in there, along with the bone broth, it just creates the most beautiful amino acid profile. And you're just getting your protein, your carbs, and you're getting your veggies in there as well. So, 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 so good. And the turmeric, I mean, it's just perfect. I could talk about this soup forever. So definitely a five star crock pot meal. <laughs> you like the crock pot? Yeah, too? this is incredible. <laughs> it's so good. This, huh? Look how good this looks. I'm I like, know. I know. Oh, this looks really, hey, I'm not lying. This looks really good. Yeah. This, it looks I'm, amazing, huh? Yeah. I'm actually really excited about this. Yeah. The cut, like how, I don't know. Too. I feel like this is like the best looking chicken oil soup I've ever seen. I know. I totally agree. I mean, not to like, you know. Wow. I gotta wait till it cools down. It's really hot. I burned my mouth. I mean, I should have it. eaten a bunch of those. You ate the muffins? Yeah. I, Did you eat the zucchini yeah, protein muffins? With some. That's milk. in another video. Milk. I had two of them. Yeah. I'll leave a link to that video. It's really good. Or it might that be up after hot. this. It's really hot. I know. It's really hot. Okay. All right, I'm gonna eat it. Let's serve it up. Oh my gosh. I just got out of the shower. I'm like, I'm, I'm soaking wet. Oh my gosh, this is the best chicken noodle soup ever, 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 ever. Mmm. It's perfect. Yeah. It's just perfect. It just is. It's like I was telling you, like you just look at it, you know it's gonna be great. Yeah. It looks really good. It looks so good. Do yourself a favor and make this soup. <laughs> it's so good. And I think that the homemade bone broth took it to a new level, like a new height. It leveled it up. With fresh parsley from the farmer's market, it's a, it's, you're done. You're done. So good. Happy Thursday. I cannot believe it's already Thursday, but today we are gonna be making a kind of like a shepherd's pie. It's almost more of like a stew. There is gonna be a little bit more of a step to this because we are gonna be making the mashed potatoes. So I just wanna say, again, it's kind of like the chicken noodle soup, which is out of this world. And to me, it's worth the extra 10 to 15 minutes to pop something on the stove so that it can get more flavor. That's just my personal preference. Now, if you're really, really, really pressed for time, you obviously do not have to do that. You truly can just, you know, chuck everything in the crock pot. However, if you do want that extra flavor and you do have a little bit of that extra time uh, and, you're, and you're ready to do that, I do recommend it. If you want, you can just put everything in the crock pot all at once except for the peas, which we're gonna add at the end just so that they don't get really mushy. So you're just gonna throw those in right at the very end. But, and you can obviously add your potatoes in when you add the rest of your ingredients. And just remember that this is your dinner and that this is your, this is your day, these are your minutes, and you can do absolutely whatever works best for you in this season. I know I've had some seasons where it's just like, throw it in the crock pot and move on with your life. One last thing I do wanna say, this chopper is absolutely life-changing. If you are really pressed for time or you just wanna be able to get dinner done faster or just any anything in general that you need to chop done faster. This chopper I've had for I think five years now and it works so well. It is one of the most convenient, helpful, and handy kitchen like appliances tools. And the other thing that really makes this really cool that, you know, other than the time saving is it makes all the food the same size. So even the soup, I just feel like there's something about that that it, I don't know, it just makes it 
it just makes it good. I, it's hard to even explain, but I feel like everything cooks evenly and it's all the same size pieces. So it just, it's just awesome. And I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description box if you don't have it. I've had this one for five years and it has worked perfectly every single time. It makes chopping like that. It is so quick and so easy and you are going to absolutely love it. And I feel like this is honestly a kitchen essential for me now. Love it and let's, let's get chopping. <laughs> Okay, so this is just a little tip. I wanted to let you know that I added in arrowroot to this recipe just to thicken up the sauce a little bit. So usually if I was gonna make this over the stove, I would not add arrowroot, but just because it's gonna be made in the crock pot and we're not gonna have everything kind of cooking at a higher heat on the stove where the steam is being able to be released a lot more and things are just able to reduce down a little bit more over the stove. So in the crock pot, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be too runny. I wanted it to be a really nice consistency to where when you took a bite, you didn't feel like <laughs> you were biting into a soup. Falling silent in the car And do you remember the fog was there? Now for our mashed potatoes, we are going to be using gold potatoes. And I love organic gold potatoes. They just have a really rich flavor. They're kind of sweet. They're just very yummy. And I love specifically in this recipe to use gold potatoes. So I'm going to be adding in my organic coconut milk. I love this one. It's delicious and it's not, here's the thing. The nutritional yeast really just kind of cancels out the flavor of the coconut milk. So you're really just tasting potato. Like you, you don't bite into it and go, okay, did we just make coconut potatoes? Um, no, it really does have a very nice flavor. And I feel like because of the nutritional yeast, it really just helps to kind of cancel out that coconut flavor. So now at the very end of our slow cook, I am going to add a little bit more of the arrowroot, the peas, and just a little bit of ghee. And then at the end, we're gonna top it off with our mashed potato and some parsley and then you want to let it cook one more time for like 30 to 40 minutes and then you're ready to serve it up and enjoy do your crock pot what meals are getting insanely <laughs> i know the crock pot meals insane. are actually the best yeah this they're is, literally the best i love stew well it's kind of like a, it's like a stew shepherd's pie yeah this looks really it's its good. own thing i feel like it's like yesterday when you just look at it and you just by looking at it, no, it's gonna be insane. I know the chicken noodle soup. This is this looks gourmet. So good. Amen. Ah! Wow. Mm. Good job. Thank you. You like it? Love it. I cannot think of like a yummier week of meals. This mm. meal right here is number one. Yesterday, the the chicken chicken what? noodle soup. What? This beats a chicken noodle. Yeah, this no. it, it's, it's up there insane. No, chicken noodles on top. This in me. my book, it's this is great. I love this kind of meal. You love stew, huh? Yeah. You so love, this okay. is one noodle soups chicken too. Noodle soup I don't even know one. like the other one uh, before. Remember the apple chicken thighs? Apple chicken oh, thighs. Oh yeah, I like that. Um, I like the one the, that you I like that with little, the lime. I like that one. That so one. that's three. That's and then three. have you done four or is there more? This is four right here. Yeah, that's the order. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the order that you did it in. Mm -hmm. But this is number one for me. Mm. This is incredible. Oh, this is so good. Wow. I'm shocked that this beats the chicken. I mean, this is amazing. I love stew, so. That's true. You love stew. Are you a stew person or a soup? I'm soup. That chicken noodle is next level. It was level. incredible. Don't get it's me next wrong. Level. It's like, they're like there. Yeah. It's not this like, oh my gosh, so it's way, like, they're both incredible. This is about to make every single fall recipe that you make this year with a butternut squash so much easier as long as you're not roasting it if you wanna just get it cooked. Instead of baking it, put it in the slow cooker on high for four hours and then when it comes time for dinner, you can do whatever you wanna do for your dinner. So I know this isn't technically a crock pot meal, but I just cooked the butternut squash all day, again, on high for four hours. Don't put anything in there. It's 
only the butternut squash exclusively, no water, no oil, nothing, just that. And then I just chopped up some organic spicy chicken sausage and made this cauliflower gnocchi from Trader Joe's. And I just whipped that up on the stove super quickly. And then I just chopped up some fresh garlic and took my remaining of my coconut milk from actually the day before, added in my gnocchi, added in about a cup of coconut milk and half a cup of bone broth. I just brought everything to a boil. And then in the meantime, I prepped out my herbs. So I just used some fresh, sage and fresh oregano and wow this was such a winner for a dinner and then i did a cup of our cooked butternut squash i just scooped it right out puree it. i didn't even have to puree it to be honest it was so soft that i didn't even really need to do that okay so i know this doesn't entirely count as a crock pot meal because we just cooked the squash in the crock pot. But the thing is, I didn't even know that you could do that. So, you know, now you know, that's how, that is gonna be the best way to me to cook the butternut squash. Cause I'm like, whoa, that's just so easy. You literally just put it in to the crock pot and it cooks. Like how easy is that? This sauce in this is absolutely delicious. Like it's incredible. So love the sauce. It's super flavorful and it's a great, it's a great little meal. So ending off the week, Friday, Friday night with our yummy, and we kind of ate all over the place. My sister was here, so Bo already ate, so he's doing the dishes, and I'm eating my oh, dish. Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. The good thing about what you made was, even though we didn't have a lot, mm -hmm. but you don't need a lot. A little goes a long way, like I'm mm -hmm. super good. Yeah. It's kind of good because I, I can overeat. I don't know how to sing. Mm -hmm. Stop, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. With that remainder of the butternut squash, I decided to just whip up a butternut squash pasta. How delicious does that sound? So I really needed to use up these tomatoes from the farmer's market and I already had some chopped up onion and then I just took a head of garlic and, or took a clove of garlic, or I guess it is a head of garlic, and I just chopped off the tops and then I just put a little bit of olive oil in there. I put some prosciutto on the top and then I just stuck it in the oven and I chopped up again some of those fresh herbs from the day before and just had some leftovers and then all I did was heat it up with a little bit of ghee just to bring out the flavor of the herbs so heated up my ghee threw in the herbs for just like 30 seconds I just thought I would chat with you really quickly while I'm making the butternut squash pasta. So the thing is, is that it's kind of like a spin-off recipe. So I'm just gonna call it five recipes, even though there's six, because technically these two are not technically, but they are, they are. That's the thing. I didn't know that you could roast. So now that you know, now that you know you can roast a butternut squash, not roast. Now you can slow cook a butternut squash in the slow cooker. I mean, that is just so amazing. It's so easy to cook a butter. I mean, it literally takes not even one second. You just put it into the crock pot and put it on high for four hours. It cannot get more simple than that. So, and I already had, I needed to use up tomatoes and I already had some pre-chopped uh, onion from earlier this week and then just chopped off the head of a garlic, put a little olive oil in there, stuck it in the oven. And I did that before I boiled the pasta. It literally, I, I've not even been cooking for 15 minutes. I mean, it took 10 minutes to do the pasta. So this is so incredibly fast. So what I'm trying to say is you can do so many different meals with butternut squash because it's such a neutral squash. And so I'm just gonna whip up this pasta. I don't even have a recipe. I'm just winging it. I'm just going for it. I'm, I literally just, again, I needed to use up those tomatoes and I needed to use up the onions. So I think I'm gonna do about two cups of the butternut squash, if I can get it out. Um, so we're just gonna put two cups of butternut squash add in the tomato and the onion and the garlic. And I just quickly made that herb butter. That took me like one minute to throw the ghee and the sage and the fresh thyme in there. That's from last night's dinner. Now you just wanna add your roasted veggies to the blender and then go ahead and blend everything up. And wow, I'm so amazed at how good this sauce turned out. It was such a fun fall recipe and it's so flavorful. Very fun, I've never done a butternut squash pasta before, but it was very creamy and very warming. I topped it with a little bit of Parmesan Reggiano for those good fat soluble vitamins. And again, some prosciutto. Mmm. 
that's actually really good. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's mm. actually insane. I'm gonna mm. eat the whole thing, I'm so hungry. Go ahead, <laughs> it's so good. Mm. I'm kind of ready for another week of crock pot meals. <laughs> Amen. What a perfect fall recipe. Yeah. So yummy. I just finished editing this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, please click thumbs up. And I love sharing these what I eat in a week videos with you. I really hope that you make these recipes. They are so delicious. So I love you so much. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.